Do you know what the problem is with America? Is the churches of America. Do you know what the problem with the churches of America are? They need revived. Do you know what we need? We need an old-fashioned, Holy Ghost-filled, heaven-sent revival. We need God to do something in our hearts. Now, I know we like to point the finger at everybody else as being the problem, but when it comes down to us, we ought to say, God, send revival and send revival right here to me. I need revival. Notice these people, when they saw what was going on, multitudes came. Many people were coming out. You know, people do not mind you having a church just as long as it's not a growing church. If you have a small church, a little church, a rinky-dink church, they don't have a problem with that. But brother, when the multitudes start to come out, and that's what's going on here. The multitudes are starting to come out. People are coming out of the woodwork. They're coming out of it. Why? Because they heard about a church that had something going on. And it wasn't the programs that were drawing them to the church. It was Jesus who was drawing to them the church. And the lives that were being changed that were in that church. We ought to ask God to save folks. And we ought to ask God to change the lives of people that come to this church. You say, preacher, why do you get so passionate about your preaching? Because I want the preaching to change lives. I want God to do something in our church. Notice in verse 17. Verse 17 comes after 16. And verse 17 comes after verse 15. And verse 17 comes after verse 14. In verse 14, they were saved. In verse 15 and 16, they were changed. In verse 16, also you see the people were coming out. Now look what happens in verse 17. Then, when, then, that's when, then. Then the high priest rose up. By the way, if you don't want any trouble, don't do anything for God. Don't do anything for God. You don't want any trouble. And that's why the most people don't do anything. Because if, if I get myself involved, there's going to be trouble along the way. If I teach a Sunday school class, there's going to be trouble. Oh, you don't think little ones can cause trouble? Go see Mrs. Ritchie and find out if little ones can cause trouble. Those little angels. Go and soul winning. Do you think you can get some trouble? Oh, yeah, go into personal care home. You get trouble. Oh, yeah, you get trouble. You, you go anywhere, there's going to be trouble around. And notice the trouble came. It said, then the high priest rose up. That old rascal wouldn't do anything but sit around like an old dog laying around. But when things started happening someplace else, that's when he got up. I can remember this little church being beside a lot of places that people got upset because the little church was there. We were just a small church. But when they saw it there, they got upset. Do you realize that there were other churches that were praying that this church would, would go under? They got upset. Well, let me tell you something. The religious crowd will get upset when they see something happen. And a lot of times the reason for it is because they get convicted of their own neglect and what they're not doing. Notice it says... Then the high priest rose up. I'm glad he got some legs finally under him. He rose up and all they that were with him, which were in the sect of the Sadducees, that's a liberal crowd. They didn't believe in the resurrection. They didn't believe in angels. They just went with everything. It says, and were filled with indignation. They weren't filled with the Holy Spirit of God. They weren't filled with love. They were filled with indignation. In verse 18, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. The root of this terrible weed is pride, jealousy, animosity. That old green-eyed monster started to rear its ugly head. And then notice what takes place in verse 19. They put them in the prison. We're going to stop you. We're going to stop you good. 
We're going to put you in the prison. Verse 19, but, I like this, but, God's good little conjunction in there. There is a change that's about to take place. But, I love that but because that's when God steps in. But, the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth. God set them free. Now, your average person, as soon as they would have got set free, they'd have been done. I'm not going to do that anymore. I learned my lesson. Once burnt, I learned. I, I got bit by that dog. I'm not going back. But notice what the angel says. The angel opened the prison door and brought them forth. And notice the message from God. In verse 20, go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. He said, I want you to go back and do the same thing that you were doing before. You realize if you got, get knocked down, you need to get back up and do the same thing you were doing before. If, if you're going for God and you're doing what God wants you, you're going to get knocked off. You're going to get knocked down. You're going to get pushed. You're going to get opposition. You're going to have some things that are going to come your way that are going to be difficult. But get right back to it. Oh, Don't let the devil stop you. Don't let the devil slow you down. You just keep doing what God wants you to do. Notice God took care of that prison problem. And here the disciples are right back doing what they did before delivering the Gospels. And notice the authorities told them to stop. Now let me just tell you this. What will you do if the authorities tell you to stop? If the authorities tell you to stop passing out Gospel tracts, what are you going to do? Uh, if the authorities tell you to stop praying in public places, what will you do? What will you do if they decide that you're not allowed to have church anymore? We're going to put a chain on the church door. We're going to lock the church door. What will you do? Uh, what will you do if the, if the government or the authorities start saying, okay, you can't witness anymore? You know what we need? We need to get some guts. We need to get some grit. And we need to keep going for God. Amen. There are people in other countries that suffer greatly for the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ. It was a Sunday morning. It's 2013. Two Muslim suicide bombers entered a church in Pakistan. They detonated the explosives. They killed 127 men, women, and children. 250 were wounded. On Monday, the day after the bombing, people went back into the church. They gathered up the Sunday school papers that were scattered everywhere from that bomb. They gathered the shoes of the children that had been murdered so they could use those shoes again for other children. They washed the walls down, the blood that was on the walls, the blood of their friends and their family members. Then they arranged the pews they sat in those pews and they sang praises to God. You know, friend, there's a time for mourning and there's a time for moving. And I want you to understand something. We don't have much downtime because our time is getting short. Our lives are getting short and the time of the Lord's return is soon. And sometimes the best place to heal if you're hurting is on your feet. Do something for the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be is steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. Legality is not morality. The disciples said we ought to obey God rather than men. Legality is not morality when it comes to sin. Oh, you're saved. You're born again. And so for some reason or another, Christians have the idea, well, since I'm saved, I'm born again, I can get myself involved in sin all I want, and I can sin, 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 and the Lord, He has to forgive me. I want you to understand something. You should not use your liberty as an occasion of the flesh 
to involve yourself in sin. You know, since God saved you from the penalty of sin, you should not use your freedom to participate in sin. There are people today that are, they're, they're killing themselves off. They're headed to an early death because of the sin that they allowed in their life. Oh, Christian, I'll tell you this. If God's going to get out the, uh, the paddle or God's going to get out the switch or God's going to get out the, the board of correction to chasten you, he will. That untamed temper that you have, that, that can cost you a tombstone. Those drugs that you get yourself involved in, they'll drag you down to an early grave. That liquor, it'll kill you quicker. Sin will destroy a Christian just like the lost. Freedom to sin is not freedom but slavery. Do you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is a servant of sin. It is dumb to put back on the shackles of sin once God's delivered you. It is dumb, dumb, dumb to go back, back, back into sin again. Go forward in your Christian walk, not backwards. In the Bible, there was a man by the name of Saul. His name was changed to Paul. He was a different person in Jesus Christ, and he went forward. How about Abram in the Bible, whose name was changed to Abraham? Why would he change his name to Abraham? Because he was going forward, not backwards. Man in the Bible by the name of Jacob. Jacob had his name changed to Israel. Why? Because Jacob wasn't going backwards. Jacob was going forward. Now let me some, tell you something about you, child of God, Christian. You are born again. Do you know the direction you're to be going? Forward, not backwards. You call yourself a child of God? Act like a child of God. You call yourself a Christian? Act like a Christian. You say you've been born again? Then act like you've been born again. The Bible tells us that we ought to make sure that we are acting and behaving like Christians, like children of God. The Bible said, be ye holy as I am holy. If you're a child of God, you ought to act like a child of God. Shame on Christians today that think that somehow or another they can pervert the word of God and they're going to go out there and do whatever they want. I can get myself involved in sin because I've got my free ticket to heaven. I want you to know something. If you are saved, there ought to be a change in your life. I'm not saved because of the change. I'm changed because I got saved. Sin will hold you back. Sin will keep you from being used of God. The Bible says, and be not conformed to this world, but be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. This book right here is a book of warning to us. Amen. Christians can't live however they want. There's a price, there's a penalty. There was a man by the name of Edward Cooper. Now most people don't have a clue who Edward Cooper is. But he was famous across America. He was a common staple and fixture on American television. If I'd say, who's Edward Cooper? Everybody say, I have no idea who Edward Cooper is. But Edward Cooper was Bozo the Clown. How many people know who Bozo the Clown is? Oh, I know who Bozo is. Bozo the Clown was in the 1950s on television quite a bit. He had a a common phrase or a message that he always concluded with, he'd say, buddies and partners, he say, get checked for cancer. But Edward Cooper was so busy with his career that he neglected to get checked for cancer. And before the cancer was detected in his body, it was too late, it was all through him. And Edward Cooper, a.k.a. Bozo the Clown, died at the age of 41 of a disease that he warned other people to get checked for. You know what I see a lot of Christians doing? Acting like a bozo. 
acting like a clown. If you clown around with sin, I want you to understand something. The Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Legality is not morality when it comes to sin. Legality is not morality when it comes to the state. In our text this morning, we saw Peter and the other apostles answered, said, we ought to obey God rather than man. The government is not God. The government is not God. Never has been God. Never will be God. Down in D.C., the swamp seems like it's getting deeper and deeper and deeper. And I want you to know that the answer for America is not government programs. The answer for America is not bigger welfare checks. The answer for America is not raising the minimum wage. The answer for America is not found in the politician. The answer for America is found in God. And my friend, we ought to get out of the swamp and get the swamp out of us. The government's not God. I obey the government. I do what the government tells me to do because God tells me how to obey the government. And God tells me what to do. Being a Christian ought to make you a better citizen. And if it doesn't make you a better citizen, you better check out your Christianity. Our biblical heritage today is trying to be erased. This stinking 1619 project and this garbage they're putting in through public schools today trying to teach children to be unpatriotic ought to be thrown out and burnt. The Bible says if the foundations be destroyed, what can the wicked or what can the righteous do? There are groups today that are trying to make America out like America is a wicked, oppressive nation. If you don't like America, then get out of America. Nobody's keeping you here. I'll help carry your bags to the airport. Bless God, we ought to say, it's time for Christians to stand up. I'll tell you something, if socialism and communism is so good, then you go to the socialistic countries and the communist countries. Hey, why are they trying to get into America through that southern border? I'll tell you why, because communism and socialism doesn't work. By the way, communists kill Christians. Communism and Christianity are incompatible. They do not go together. And you can mark it down that there's going to be persecution that's going to be coming our way as they're pushing a socialistic agenda and a communistic agenda. People ought to follow the Bible. You know what the Bible says? Order my steps in thy word. God is our commander. God is our captain. God is our commissioner. Christianity makes America a better nation. Do you know where this country came from? Have you checked it out? By the way, they're trying to say it came because of slavery. Baloney! They're trying to change history. When you start to see them tearing down statues, when you see them starting to tear down things that serve as a reminder of what has taken place in the past, mark it down. They're trying to change something. I'm not worried about the people with the pencils that are trying to rewrite history. I'm worried about the people with the other end of the erasers are trying to erase history. The Bible, the Bible says that there was a nation by the name of Israel that had a problem. Their problem was they were sick. Their problem wasn't that they didn't have enough government. Their problem was they didn't have enough God. The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 4, it says, A sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel to anger. They are all gone away backwards. Why should ye be stricken anymore? Ye will revoke more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart is faint. 
We need to allow God to fix our head. Heads today aren't thinking. The ones that are thinking aren't thinking straight. We ought to allow God to fix our heart. We ought to allow God to fix what our hands are doing. Israel was a sick nation. And many times when you think about the government, and a lot of times people say, well, uh, the government ought to do this and the other. Every time you get the government involved in some things, it, it, it never seems like it turns out very well. The government always slows things down. The government seems like they always hinder things, complicates things, instead of making things better. In Athens, there was a beautiful Corinthian pillars there. It, it was all that was left of the temple of Zeus. They woke one morning to find these pillars, beautiful, massive pillars, had fallen over, destroyed, broken. And they wondered what happened, what took place. They found out that a colony of ants had moved into one of those columns, had built a nest and started to eat away at that rock until it deteriorated to the point that it fell. I want you to understand something. Us going from God is deteriorating our country. We're destroying ourselves. We get so worried about people outside hurting us, we're hurting ourselves. We're destroying ourselves. We're eating away at ourselves. Anytime you go from God, it's going to bring ruin. So my best advice to you is don't wander. Don't walk. And don't go far from God because it brings ruin. Legality is not morality when it comes to sin. Legality is not morality when it comes to the state. Legality is not morality when it comes to salvation. The law cannot save you. Can't save you. Oh, preacher, I'm going to obey the law. I obey those Ten Commandments. Those Ten Commandments, they're not going to save you. You can try to, by the way, obey the Ten Commandments, but I don't think there's a person that has. The law can't save you. The Bible says this in Galatians 3, 24. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. You know what the law did? It pointed us in the right direction. The law pointed us to Jesus Christ. Legality is not morality when it comes to salvation. You cannot be good enough to get to heaven. You cannot be more religious enough to get to heaven. There's only one way to heaven, and that's through the Lord Jesus Christ. It was the late 18th century in Poland. Kaiser forces were burning Jewish villages. One village that had been burned and was burnt down to nothing. Nothing was left standing. Next morning the sun came up and there was a Jewish gentleman that decided he was going to build himself a cellar store. So he got some boards and he put those boards together and he built himself a little cellar's stand, a little cellar's stall. And one young man walked by. Everything burnt down all around him. Ashes. Here's a guy with a cellar stall. He said, what are you what are you trying to sell among all these ruins? And that man that had that stall said, I'm selling hope. You know, you can sell water in a dry desert. And you can sell hope on the ash heaps of destruction. Can I tell you what God did? God gave us hope. God gave us hope. God gave us hope in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. The hymn writer said, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. I want you to understand, legality is not morality. The government is not God. Legality is not morality when it comes to sin. 
Just because you're a Christian and you're not under the penalty of sin does not mean you ought to go out there and enslave yourself in sin. Oh, I'm going to tell you something. God's going to have the last laugh when it's all said and done. You might think you're playing with God, but you're going to be paid. Legality is not morality when it comes to sin. Legality is not morality when it comes to the state. The government's not God. That means to me, I'll obey the government, but when the government usurps its authority over God's authority, I'm going to obey God. Legality is not morality when it comes to salvation. You cannot be legal enough to get to heaven. You can't obey the law enough to get to heaven. Because heaven's only available through the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's our hope. Someone brought a coin to Jesus one time. And said, is it lawful to pay taxes, give tribute to Caesar? Jesus says, well, look at that coin. Whose image do you see on that coin? They said, Caesar's. You know what Jesus said? Give to Caesar the things that be of Caesar and give to God the things that be of God. Whose image are you made in? You are not made in the image of the government. The Bible says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. You know whose image you are made in? God's image. If you are a child of God, you are born again. You are a new creature in Christ. You know whose image you're made after? God's. Legality. It's not morality. The government doesn't decide that all of a sudden abortion's legal. So abortion's moral. Oh no. Legality is not morality. The government says same-sex marriage is legal. That makes it moral. No. Legality is not morality. Recreational drug use is legal. Someone said a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Well, we're wasting a lot of minds, a lot of brain cells today. So we're going to make recreational drug legal. That'll make it moral. No. Legality is not morality. Where do you get your orders from? I'll tell you where I get my orders from. I get my orders from headquarters. The Bible. I get my orders from headquarters, not from hindquarters, the government. I get them from God. And every child of God, every one of us, we need to understand the same thing the apostle said, we ought to obey God rather than man. I think I'm a good citizen. I'm very patriotic and I love my country. But my country, America, the government's not God. Constitution is not the Bible. And politicians are not pastors. Legality is not morality. We ought to obey God rather than men. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, oh dear God, help us, Lord Jesus, to realize that God, the priority of it all, that God, we need to put you first. And Lord, when we put you first, you tell us how to be the right kind of a citizen, the right kind of American, the right kind of a husband and wife, the right kind of a Christian. Lord, help us, God, to realize that's what we need to do. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. I wonder how many Christians this morning, Christians, say, preacher, I want to be all that I can be for the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to obey God rather than men. Would you put your hand up if that's you? And you can put those hands down. But let me tell you something. Sometimes there's going to be situations that are going to arise that are going to cause you to be fearful. In those situations, I want you to remember this. We ought to obey God rather than men. I wonder if there's anyone this morning say, Preacher, I'm not sure I'm saved, but I need to be saved. I need Jesus as my Savior. I'm going to lift up my hand, Preacher, and I want you to pray for me. 
Preacher, I need the Lord. I wonder if there's anybody like that this morning. Preacher, I need to be saved. I need to be born again. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're living in a world that can be very hostile at times, fearful at times. Uh, Lord, help us, God, to put fear where it belongs. Help us to fear you and not man. God, it's in those times that we really need your help. Those times in which we really need to stand strong and tall and firm. God, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would help us, Lord, to obey you above all. In Jesus' name.